I was first invited to talk to the Taming Wave TEDx event, it went something like this. Um, yeah, sure, I'll join your Taming Waves event. Should I bring my own board? <laughs> yeah, sure, you should bring your own board. Oh, my God, he's so funny. They probably thought I was joking. I'm sure by now the organizers of the event are looking at me right now going, uh, I told you we shouldn't bring the crazy guy. Well, sorry about that. The Dalai Lama was busy, though. So here I am. Uh, you, you ended up with me. And I don't feel I'm qualified to talk about many things. So cool picture. So since I see so many waves around, I want to talk about surfing because taming the waves for me is like so obviously connected to, to surfing, okay? If you want to tame the waves, you got to surf. So the question today is one, should you go surfing? That's the question. So I'm going to try to answer that question for you guys. Let me leave my board down here. I was going to use it. Uh, in my presentation, but uh, the lack of water on states is not helpful. Greek organizing, they tell you, taming the waves, they don't have water here. Anyway, so why, like, should you go surfing or not? And the answer to me came a couple of years ago uh, when I was uh, actually traveling to Bali, Indonesia, and I was trying to learn how to surf at the moment. And I was really bad, I was just beginning. Uh, thankfully, over the years, I became even worse, I don't know how to surf, but the answer is this, and it's the most common sense knowledge uh, we human beings have acquired since day one of our existence on planet Earth. We, yeah, here, it's good, yeah. So the answer is yes, because you only live once. Or <laughs> some of you may live like six or seven if you're from India, depending on how you treated your neighbors. But for me, the answer is you only live once, or if we rephrase it, you're all going to die very soon. But <laughs> don't be scared, soon is a relative term, okay? It's just that if you ask me, a few decades down the road is definitely soon. It's soon, guys, trust me. So why should I go surfing? Why should I go surfing if you only live once, okay? And the secret hides in the definition of uh, the word YOLO live once, which is YOLO, it, it goes like this. Um, you only live once has different, different definitions. Uh, one I really don't like is that it's uh, s like someone's excuse to do stupid things in life. I don't like this. It's completely uninspiring, okay? For me, you only live once means that you should be more open to take calculated risks without the fear of failure blocking your way in order to gain in your life and reach your goals. Risk, risk assessment, is the key to life, if you ask me, okay? Now, I've noticed, like, I, I mentioned the word risk, and some of you are a little bit reserved, because human beings, we don't like the word risk. We think it's something negative. It's like we're in a risky situation, nobody moves. Risk is not good. Even the definition of risk, obviously you realize I like definitions, uh, is risk means, like, a situation uh, where it is, um, you're exposed to danger, okay? So does that sound positive or negative? Exposed to danger. It's definitely negative, right? We don't go around saying, oh, we're exposed to danger. That's so cool. <laughs> Look at this. There's a truck coming on us. No. Risk is not a good thing. But there are two kinds of risks. They are the risk that hide gain at the end, and they are just like the risk that is like a stupid decision, okay? For example, let's say that you want to play a game of Russian roulette, okay? You know Russian roulette with a gun, right? Well, there are two outcomes from the one you hold the gun and you pull the trigger. You are you're either going to die with a bullet passing through your head or you're going to survive. Now, this is definitely a risky situation and it entails risk, right? The thing is that on the first outcome, you die. That's the loss. But on the other hand, you don't gain something. I'm not here to talk about that kind of risk. I'm here to talk about the risks you can take in your life, in your everyday decisions in order to improve your life, okay? Now, human beings, uh, we are not trained to evaluate risk in small decisions. We only do that when it comes to business, when it comes to big decisions like getting married and stuff like that. But risk is everywhere. If you want to keep your girlfriend, find a new girlfriend, find more money, keep your money, move to a different city, find a good wife, find a good mother-in-law, mother everything has risk, okay? Definitely the last one. Uh, I'm not married, don't worry. Uh, still. 
So I'm going to give you an example, okay? Because not only that, but the greater the risk, the greater the returns. It sounds like a Lord of the Rings line, but it's actually one of the most basic concepts of business. I'll give you an example. Let's say that I ask from you 10, 10 euros, okay, or drachmas in a few months, and <laughs> I tell you that if you give me the 10 euros and you win, I will give you back 10,000 euros. Would you say yes? Most of you would say no before you answer it, because you're posed with this dilemma every single day by the national lottery ticket, and you don't buy the ticket, and they give you 10 million, not 10,000, right? Why don't you buy it? Because the chances are so slim. But let me change the game a little bit. I want you to give me 10 euros, and I will give you back 10,000 euros if you win the flip of a coin. Heads you win, tail I lose. Would you say yes? Everybody would do that. Why? What did I change? I changed the probabilities, the chances. So what we need to understand is that there are three variables, three different elements when looking at risk. It's, first, it's what you put in, okay? What are you willing to lose? Secondly, is what you take out of it, if you win the 10,000 euros. And the third thing is really important, and the third element is the probability, or as we say today, the risk, okay? Some situations are risky. The thing is, though, that these specific laws of risk and risk assessment, they can be applied to everyday small decisions. It's just that, as I said earlier, we are not trained to do that. We like to act upon our instinct and not based on common sense. Weirdly enough, yeah? So let's take a scenario, okay? Relationships are important in everybody's life, right? I mean, you guys like girls, right? The, 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 the boys, I mean, okay? Maybe some girls like girls, but that's a different topic. Different TEDx, okay? Not, not, not here. So let's say scenario. Uh, we are, I'm, in a, I'm in a bar and I see like a beautiful girl. Not the cameraman. Uh, let, let me look. There, a beautiful girl sitting over there. And I say, oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. Uh, but I don't go and talk to her. I don't. Why? I, I have the fear of rejection, okay? It's risky. She might say no. But let's try and try to implement those three variables in this simple situation. What am, what am I going to lose? What do I put in? Am I going to lose any money if I go and talk to her at the bar? Probably if I go and buy a drink, but uh, that's a cheesy way to hit on a girl, guys. Don't do it, right? Please. It's outdated. Am I going to lose my time? It's going to take 30 seconds if she says no. So I don't lose my time. Time is precious, but I'm not going to lose any time. Maybe I'm going to lose a little bit of my pride if she rejects me. But come on, guys. This is not an investment. So my actual investment in this is zero. Nothing. What is the outcome if she says yes? Possible outcome. I might end up with a good relationship. I might find true love. My love. <laughs> I might end up with a great night. Or I even, even like a great family. But how much do you prize true love? This one in a million chances that she is my true love if she says yes. Does it have a price? No, it doesn't. Yet again, you don't go to talk to that girl. And five minutes ago, you were ready to give me 10 euros to get back 10,000. And now I'm telling you, would you, what would you say actually? Let me ask you a different way. If I ask you, give me nothing, and there is one in a million, you will win 10 million euros. Would you give me nothing? Everybody would say yes. It was only a million, but I would give it to you, right? Then why don't you go and talk to the girl since you don't lose anything? All you have to do is overcome your fear of rejection, the fear of failure. Human beings, we are not trained to evaluate risk, but we should. And it's not just real-life situations that you can apply this. You can also apply this in business. And in business, is obviously even more intense, this, uh, this uh, laws, because it's finance. And I'm going to use myself as an example. So a few years ago, when I was around my 20s, and I was trying to figure out what I'm going to do with the rest of my life, besides video games and nightclubs, um, I was in my room, and I was thinking, and I was like, I have a small basketball attached on the wall. I don't know if anybody else does that. And I, I have a small ball, and I like, I like to shoot it. It's like, whew, nothing goes in, though, okay? And that's the way I think. It's my thinking process. That, and I think, and I, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And suddenly, while I was playing, I stop, 
I turn around and I say, oh my God, this is it. I'm going to travel the world. And you know what? I'm not just going to travel the world. I'm going to make a business out of it. Because I think there is a big gap in the market in travel shows. So far, everybody is focusing on food, historical facts, sightseeing. But I'm going to give them a different thing. I'm going to give them the experience. I'm going to have fun. And the viewers are going to have fun with me. That's something different. Oh, my God, this is an amazing, brilliant business idea. That's what I'm going to do. And I was so excited, huh? So what's the next step? I need to follow up on my idea, right? You got to do something about it. So I write down my concept on a piece of paper. I take my paper and I start walking towards the channel because I need to find a channel to say yes. So there it is. That's the channel. I go and I knock on the door. Knock, knock. Hello? Hi, I'm Sakis. Who? (laughs) Sakis. Sakis who? Uh, Anyway, it doesn't matter. Listen, I got a great idea for you, okay? It's a new show. You're going to love it. Lots of money for you. So here it goes. It's me. Never worked on television before. And I want to take my best friends. They never worked on television before. And we want to travel the world. But not just like Europe. I'm going to go to Japan, to the United States, to Africa, to New Zealand, everywhere. And on top of that, we're going to have the time of our life. We're going to have crazy time. And you know something? On top of that, you're going to pay me. Did you think that by yourself? (laughs) You're so smart. (laughs) Total failure. Big rejection, guys. Weirdly enough, he didn't like my obviously good idea for me. So I was really sad and disappointed because, uh, believe it or not, I was working on the concept for about a year. And uh, I started heading back to my apartment, and I pick up the small ball, and I start shooting again. It's like, and I'm shooting, and I'm thinking, why did he say no? Like, he didn't like what I said. I said, like, I stopped and I turned my head again. I said, this is it. If he didn't like what I say about my idea, I'm going to show him my idea. So I gather my friends. We all get in a plane and we fly over to Bali, Indonesia, where I started learning surf. And we land there. We take out small amateur cameras. We start filming. And we create a really, really bad pilot, okay, of the show. But still, now I had something in my hands. Now I can go back and say, hey, look at this. So I go back to Greece. I take my pilot. I'm walking and I'm going to the channel again. Like, knock, knock. Ah, it's you again. Yeah. So listen, I know you didn't like my concept, but now you can watch it. Would you be interested? And out of the blue, he says, sure, I'll watch it. So he takes and he starts watching. And he says, like, "Mm -hmm." five minutes later, it's... Yeah, we don't want to pay for it. Thank you very much. (laughs) Failure number two. One more year of my life wasted. And on top of that, the money I had to invest to go to Bali. So two years of my life. So what do I do? I did the only thing I knew how to do. The only thing that kept me alive. I went back to my apartment. I took my little ball and I started shooting again. So I started thinking and I'm shooting. I said, I... Why? Why? What happened? Well, he didn't say, yes, my dream is going to be destroyed. But I was not afraid of failure. So while I was playing, I stopped. I turned my head. And I said, listen, he said, he said, it's okay. It's not, a bad, it's not a bad pilot, but he doesn't want to pay for it. So what if, he, what if he doesn't pay for it? What if I give it to him for free? Well, not exactly free, but what if I like, accept a really small amount of money? I might lose money, but then he may say yes. So I go back to the to the channel, I knock on the door, he opens the door, I say, stop. I know you said it's okay, so it's not bad. Would you be willing to accept an offer with much, much less money? Something you cannot say yes, no. He said, are you sure you're willing to do that? You're going to lose money. He said, no, it's okay, I'm willing to do that. Like, well, then, yes, you got a deal. Hallelujah. It's my first success, guys. And I was so excited. Two years of my life, two and something, actually, after wasting, after actually investing so much time, so much money, now I have my show. We get on a plane, we fly all the way to Latin America, and we start filming, and we have the World Party Show, which is my life's dream. It's amazing. Unfortunately, something unexpected happened, and usually unexpected, unexpected things never happen in our life. Uh, two months later, the channel has a small issue. It completely shut off. The government decides to pull off the plank, 
And boom, there goes my dream. Two and a half years of my work. I was so happy. I got my success. And then I have my biggest failure ever. Ever. Everything I've worked so far is destroyed. I don't have a channel. Boom. So what do I do? I go back to my apartment. I pick up my small ball. I start shooting again. And there I am shooting. And by now, I should be able to play in the NBA because I've been practicing a lot. But no, it didn't work out. So I just shoot. And like, while I'm there, I stop. And I turn my head and I say, you know what? It's okay that I failed again. And if you, don't, if you, if you lose, don't lose the lesson. Huh? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the show, adjust some things, invest more in, in the show. I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to make it better. And I'm going to take it to a bigger channel which initially sounded really crazy, right? And that's what I did. I wrote down my business plan. I took my new show, a little bit differently, different, and I went to the biggest channel. Now it's called Alpha. So I knock on the door, and you know what happened this time? Hey, Sakis, we know you. We've seen your work. So all these years of failure were not wasted because I gained something. I gained a small track record. And that's important in this business. So I get inside and I start talking to them. And I said, this is what I'm going to do. I can improve it and blah, 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 blah. And I didn't expect that, but they say, we're going to give you a chance. If you can prove yourself, you're going to stay in the channel. You got a deal, sir. Two years later, I'm standing in a TEDx event. After having traveled more than half of the world. And I'm trying to convince young people, young inspiring and inspired people, that all you need to do, guys, is be more open to risk and don't be afraid to fail. Because the greatest risk of all is to take no risk at all. If you don't risk, you're never going to reach your dreams. So should you go surfing? Hell yeah, you should go surfing, guys. If you don't go surfing, you take no risk. And taking no risk is like standing outside in the shore, looking at other people having fun in the waves and in the sea. Okay, here it's safe, but it's boring. You want to have fun. You want to go out there. Look at them. Okay, some of them might have a hard time with the waves. Some of them even maybe can even drown, okay? But that doesn't mean you should be afraid of failure because the shore is not life, guys. The shore will destroy your dreams. So go in the, go in the sea. Take your board, start surfing, start taming the waves. Start taming the waves today. You know why? Because you only live once, guys. Thank you very much.